All right, everybody, how y'all doing? This is your girl. You know who it is, your chocolate smoothie with Sister Talk with Valerie. And we have another episode tonight that y'all gonna love. So y'all better come on in the room. If you ain't in the room, you're missing out on something right now tonight. Because we we are still in Women's Month, Women's History Month. But we know we got history all year round. But I have a wonderful, beautiful sister that's with us tonight. And I'm so glad to have her on board with us tonight. As you know, our program is sponsored by Armstrong International Media for the Culture, for the Collective, and Untapped Music Radio. And Sister Talk with Valerie airs every Saturday at 6 and Fridays at 7.30. So tune in. If you haven't caught us, try to catch up with us. So, Miss Lady, I, I, I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to read Miss Lady's bio because I want y'all to <laughs> All the good. I'm, I'm gonna put my glasses on for this one. Put them glasses on. I'm gonna put my because I got to see this right here <laughs> when I read it. So <laughs> we have with us tonight is Miss Andre Harris. Let me tell you a little bit about her, y'all. She is a native of Washington D.C. Okay, she has overcome drug addiction, abuse, and disability. Growing up, she witnessed domestic violence firsthand. Andre is a woman on the move, y'all, and I'm talking about for real. She has come overcome many obstacles. In lieu of Women History Month, this phenomenal woman has traveled where many would give up and throw in the towel. In 2017, her longtime marriage ended, leaving her clueless as to what to do next. Understanding that all things, y'all, not some, but all things work for the good, for those who love the Lord. She pressed her way and took the plunge to pursue an acting career. Coming from pastoral office, Andre knew that it would, that it would send mixed messages to many, not all, but some, all right? But in less than a year, she had written and produced three short films, two of which have won many, many national and international awards. Upon gaining confidence in the industry, she just surrounded herself with people who knew how business flows, thus affording her the opportunity to open a film studio, people, a film studio in Bel Air, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Andre is a transitional coach whose clients consist of men and women who are in transition. That's all of us. Her saying is people are either going in, sitting in, or coming out of a situation. She uses transparency as a tool to allow people to become positive. Andre, trust, tr she touches lives through various mediums. They include, but are, are not limited to workshops, seminars, books, and films, all of which are used to help people overcome difficult challenges and to promote inner peace. She is a mother, y'all, of 10 children eight of which she adopted, okay? And I want to tell y'all something. I love this about God and how he does this for me. He brings these strong, powerful women across my path. And I'm telling you, I, I, I talked to this young lady one time and instantly felt like I had knew her forever. So this is her platform tonight, and I want you guys to welcome with open arms and love, Miss Andre Harris. Hello, Miss Harris. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me, sister. I am so glad you are here with me. And listen, sis, so you're doing a whole lot. You're doing a lot, but I want to start from the beginning, right? Okay. Because, right. And, and one of the things that's really important for me to convey is that a lot of people, not just women, but men too, we go through a lot of challenges in our life. Like you overcome, you can overcame addiction. You overcame the loss of a marriage. I want to know what, at what point did you say, all right, you know what, I'm getting ready to pivot and do something different. Huh? You know, it was crazy. I think it was um, in 2018 because I was still pastoring at that time. And I was, I was tossed. Like I was like in limbo. Okay. Um, and I started going to another ministry at that time. And I want to give a shout out to my apostle, uh, apostle uh, John Elias, but I had started going to another ministry, which is he, uh, was pastoring 
And um, he knew that I had a deep desire to do certain things. And he also knew that I was torn between actually living, pursuing my dreams and goals and staying here. And um, so needless to say, he said, you know what? I need you to get out of here and go do what, what your heart desire. Go out there and do something. And I did. And at 54, I said I was going to write three films before I turned 55. And I just want to let everybody know that I'm, I'm 58 years old. No, you're not. I'll be 59 <laughs> this year. And um, but I said at the time that I was going to do three um, films before I turned 55. Needless to say, I did do three. One of them is still uh, in post-production because we have to make some changes. Uh, but the first two won so many multi awards and I'm internationally and nationally. So that was the point in uh, when it, 2018 when I decided, you know what? The graveyard is rich and full of people who died with their dreams, full of people who did not live to meet their goals. And I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to be one of them. So here I am. But that takes strength. I mean, you know, I remember when I was in deep, deep in my mess, right? Mm -hmm. It's not something, and I know people who were was in the mess with me who's still in the mess, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not something that you wake up and say, all right, I'm going to go from feeling like I'm depressed and down and dealing with alcohol and drugs and disability, and now I'm going to go out here and I'm going to pursue my dreams. There's something, what is that something that said? That, that something was, there's a song say, um, you still calling my name. Lord, I sin, but I still hear you calling my name. So in um, I Got Clean, next month will make 31 years that I've never, I hadn't drank or got high. Now, needless to say, I got clean when I was 28 years old. And at that time, many people are coming, coming out of college and things like that. I was coming off a of crack. Um, and then uh, the the disability happened when I was preaching. I was also a dancer. I love to dance. Anybody that knows me knows I love to dance. So I was doing a liturgical dance thing one day, and um, right as I my leg went up, both of my legs cracked right underneath me. Don't know what happened. I didn't hit anything. So I ended up being in um, rehab. I had to go to rehab for a couple weeks, and then I had to be in a wheelchair for a while, and then on a walker, then on a cane, then on a crutch. And let me just say this to anybody. When you have to wait for somebody to come home to change your bed, when you have to wait on people to um, get something to eat because your legs are not functioning for you, um, that was the most humbling moment in my life. Uh, I, I lost a lot because, I mean, I, I just couldn't work and I couldn't do anything. And then prior, right, right after that, my daughter was fighting for her life on life support. Mm. And um, so I, I kept saying, I, I'm not, I can't die like this. I, I can't, I can't do this. So I slowly started rehabilitating myself to become, again, a productive member of society. And these things happen in ministry. Didn't happen when I was like dabbling in mess. It was happening in ministry. And when you can only rely on God uh, and, and how people whispering behind your back. And at the time I was married. So the women were doing many things for my husband, but they were doing very little for me, who was the pastor. Um, <laughs> so I went through all of that too. Uh, and yet, and still I came out and I came out on top. I came out flying. I came out giving God glory and giving God honor for where he has brought me from and what he has done for me in my life. I think I, I love that message. And I think, you know, people hear those believers, us believers talk about the power of God and how he brought us through. But I'm telling you, I don't think people can stress it enough. And this, and you and I talked about this, this is not about religion. This is about nope. a relationship mm -hmm. and so that was the part that had um really really took me and had me in limbo uh i was just listening to somebody tonight talking about how folk wouldn't go to the clubs and they wouldn't go this and they wouldn't go there well the only the way that i was able to reach members was in the club was at the cabarets and was in the street outreach because where the religious people wouldn't go because they have been whatever they were doing. Um, so I was the one 
that would, you know, go out there and say, hey, and sit at the bar. I don't drink. I hadn't drank, but I would have a cranberry juice on the rocks. It looks like I'm drinking. And then begin to hear people share about what they're dealing with. And then I begin to tell them how good our God is. And then I begin to tell them my story. And I begin to share with them uh, where I've been and where I, where I was at that moment. And then I look up on Sunday and they're sitting in the back of the church. So that was just the way I did outreach. They used to call me the evangelist of the lost souls because I was like, when the lost at all costs, the lost, the less, the left out, and the least are the ones that I loved. So tell me what came first. Was it the movie or the book? Um, well, the book was when I was in the wheelchair. Um, God was dealing with me on finishing up some things that I started because I was a great starter, but I wouldn't finish. And truthfully speaking, sister, my mind runs faster than my body. Um, I get that. God, my mind runs faster than my body. So I was while I was in that wheelchair and I was sitting there and um, God started dealing with me and I finished the book. Uh, I had finished the book out from underway some years ago in 2004, but I started doing the book, The Red Envelope, in which I ended up after a while making it a stage play and then a traveling stage play. And then I did a comeback called In the Midst of It All and Secrets of the Red Envelope. So that was when I was down and in the wheelchair. Now, let me just say this to you guys. I never thought about acting, okay? I was the writer, the director, stage left, stage right. Okay, this is how we gonna do it. But there came a time when people would not show up and it was too late to cast. That's how I became an actress. Trey Chaney <laughs> was on stage. And Howard G used to say that too, show it Sharon Brown. But I had did a play called The Courage to Stand Up and it was an anti-bullying play. And uh, Trey did a, a guest appearance. DJ Flavor from 93.9 Radio 1 was in the play. Uh, Jordan Jones, a lot of people, my grandson, a lot of people were in this play. And the woman that played schizophrenia, mother, she couldn't do the role because I think her mother was ill. And I was like, oh my God, it's too late to cast somebody. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? I got in the play. And Trey Chaney was like, you really should go into acting full time. I was like, you really should stop because I'm not. <laughs> um, but I did. And not only am I an actress, I'm a, direct, a director, a casting uh, director, and I'm a multi award winning filmmaker through the film festivals with over 40 wins and two nominations. And that is only from God. I did another debut play uh, with Sharon Brown um, in Secrets of the Red Envelope, where I played the pastor's uh, spiritual daughter who was in love with his spiritual son who had a wife. So everybody kept saying, is that your pastor? Is that your pastor? Because every time I came on the set, I had a different color wig with an outfit that matched the wig. And I had on all these promiscuous clothes. And oh my God, let your booty do the yoga. I was just in the zone. Not let your booty do the yoga. Yeah, honey. It, I came on with that. And it was just amazing. So yes, I have found my calling. And I found um, solace in the gift of imagination, which is how I thank God for that, the gift of imagination, because without imagination, you know, even when you read in the word, even when you read in stories, you have to have an imagination to even visualize what they're doing and visualize what's going on. And so here I stand. Mm. Let me take a minute to welcome our guests, Mr. Frank Hatchett and Shandy Gaston, Lacey Lace and Regina Davis. Welcome everybody to the show, those who are Hello. watching now and those who are watching broadcast. So I want to talk, tell me about your first short film. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a writer and I make short films. And so I always think about where those sort of characters come from, you know, where we get the juice from and, and how you know, we kind of put it all together. Tell me about yours. So again, my mind runs faster than my body. <laughs> So I was working on a movie. Um, the first movie I did was called Vita. And kudos to everybody from Vita, the Vita cast and crew. And it was about an American woman, Constance, which was me, that fell in love with an African um, guy named Chisulu. And Chisulu had a, um, you know, back in Africa and different countries, they have planned marriages and pre, you know, ordained marriages. And so he came to the States and started rocking with me. And then she comes 
And so he has to choose. So I had the the Iron Master Adi Ami Lautner along with with Tina Taylor, um, Sierra Leone's uh, well known actor and actresses in there, along with Sayo Bangora and uh, Michelle Lewis was my girlfriend in the movie. I had some girlfriends, uh, Dr. Lautawana. Uh, 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 is Crawford. She's a doctor, but she was her and Michelle were my girlfriends trying to get me to leave all this stuff alone. It's not worth it. And in the end, you know, Hey, it, he makes his choice. It was a good classic little love story, but if you can see it on YouTube under Andre Harris productions. Yes. I'm a, I want you to share your information about where people can reach out to you, but you have done so many things like, you know, you just go from one thing to another thing to another thing. And a mother of 10, like, how do you do that? Girl, that's the manic in me, okay? No. <laughs> um, I believe that uh, God keeps me young for my young. Uh, is In fact, my children's, uh, uh, three of my children's mother is actually on here. Shandy Gaston is the mother of three of my children. Um, Shandy is my niece, and I'm raising my great niece and great nieces and nephews. Uh, and um, so I think what happens is God has to choose whoever he wants to use. And so I couldn't think, I always wanted 10 children, okay? After having my son, Monte Yerva, my son, really? I have two children. My daughter, Skyra, she's be 40 this year, and my son is 36. Um, and after I had my son, the doctor told my mother that um, she, he didn't think I would be able to have any more children. It was just a traumatic thing. In fact, I thought my son was dead uh, when I came to. And um, so I always wanted a bunch of kids. And so whenever a parent needed some support, I started out being a foster mother. Um, and part of that was rehabilitation for not being emotionally available for my own children. And um, in my addiction because I was a young mother and I was a young addict and I didn't know how to raise my children properly. We didn't get evicted and things like that, but still emotionally there were some scars and things that were done. So my way of giving back was being able to do it all over again and try to do it to the best of my abilities without making the same mistakes, inspecting different results. Now, am I perfect? No, do I miss the mark? I do all the time. But the one thing that I do know that money can't buy and that's love. And so taking care of my children has been a life for me. My daughter, Sky, and my son have been a big help in there because they don't know anything about foster half this than the other hey this your new sister that's your new brother and move over let's get a bunk bed here bunk bed there and that's how it works for us so you okay so i can see all right you had two maybe get two more but you went to 10 how that <laughs> and the last one the baby girl she got snuck in okay um and she's eight she'll be nine in june i don't know what happened i i, I promise you i i don't know what happened they used to call me josephine baker okay every time you turn around I got the baby in the building you know what's going on here and um so i really don't know what happened all i know is my heart was open my home was spaced and the children got a hope. In fact, I wrote a book called A Heart, A Home, and A Hope. If I could do it, so can you. And that was just a journey on some of my children that have lived with me. Um, some I didn't adopt all of my children. Uh, I have some that's still out there, and they're probably watching. They still call me mommy. If things happen, they'll come. They need to lay, lay their head down. They come and lay down. It don't even matter. So, so many children have come through our home. It's hard for me to even count. You sound like my mom out there. That's what my mom, she was started out as an emergency foster mom, but everybody mm -hmm. that came through for an emergency ended up staying. And they were like, Ms. Robinson, you, you ain't, they supposed to be just for a short time. They, they stay it. But that's yeah. the love. That's the yes. Love. And I work with, and all of my children, I thank God for that. All of my children know who their biological parents are. They know who their families are. It's not, oh no, this, that, and the other. Mm -mm, we don't do that. In fact, um, uh, sending kudos for my daughter. Uh, my second daughter hurt. She just lost her mother uh, maybe a week or so ago. And then my 10 year old, my t he's 11 now, but he came in October because I adopted his sister um, when she was three months old and their mother fell ill and wrote a letter to the court saying, listen, my situation is not going to change and I need my son to be where my daughter and where his sister's adopted mother is. And so I have him now. And he just came in September, October, and he's 11. You're amazing. Thank you. You are amazing. 
You mentioned something about, um, cause you know, I know a little bit about addiction and, and in families and, and with myself. And so it's difficult sometimes to repair the damage that we do when we mm-hmm. are not in the right mind. Right. How did, you, did, did, did doing films and writing and books, did that help you? And what it, was the reconciliation piece? Uh, the reconciliation is um, my, my, my eight, of my children don't know my lifestyle. They don't know that lifestyle. My two elder children know that lifestyle. So the thing that I do today is just be the best mother that I can be. Um, I cannot take back what has already been done, um, but I can just make sure that I try not to do it again. So I stay clean a day at a time. Do I feel like sometimes, golly, I want to drink? Yes. Do sometimes I feel like when my mother died in January, I wanted a cigarette so bad. I was like, listen, I need I need a cigarette, a beer, something. Um, and I, when I stopped smoking, I was smoking those little teeny dainty Virginia Slim menthol and, Miss, you know, Capri's. And, Miss I and my daughter was like, this the Newport house, baby. So, <laughs> Oh, that you know that knocked me out the pocket but I did uh I I felt like that's what I wanted to do but God said you have to depend on me so the basic thing that I do today is I just stay sober stay clean stay in a sober mind and make sure when I'm feeling down today was a really down day for me um I was on another radio station today and I couldn't even get my words together it was just one of those moments where I had missed my mother so much um, and then we talked and then my girlfriend Janice had called me and I said, let's just get up and get it together. So I have to stay clean. I have to stay sober. I have to stay serene to the best of my ability because the things that I have in my life today, I've never had it before. The late way that I live my life today, I've never lived like this before. So if the crack man come, he got a lot to work with. Okay? <laughs> so I got to stay clean because I, I can't be giving up my, my cars and, cl- you know, them taking over my master bedroom and all. I, I can't be doing that. So I know that's it, right. I know it. that's right. <laughs> so tell me about and tell the audience about Trust Your Transition. I know that there is this wonderful event that's coming up and tell them all about it. Okay, so Trust Your Transition um, is based on a movement that I say people are either going in, sitting in, or coming out of something. And a lot of people say trust the process, trust this, but I believe that we're in transition. And when COVID came, the world was in transition. And um, so God had placed that in my spirit to um, be able to empower people and impact people while they're in the middle of transition, while they're trying to get to their next phase. Even for myself, I have to minister to myself a lot uh, because I missed the mark. Um, so this movement is is just a new page that we just got, I think my, uh, April put together, Trust Your Transition page. Trust Your Transition Award, the very first annual Trust Your Transition Women's Her Story Awards is this Saturday coming up. It started out small, so I thought, but everybody who's anybody is going to be in the building. I'm excited. Um, the late uh, Tracy Braxton has transitioned on, but her family, her husband and son will be there to accept the award on her behalf. And she's receiving the Community Lifetime Achievement Award for all the work that she has done in this community and abroad while she was alive. And so we honor her. We honor Dr. Sharon Wise. We honor Mercedes Chambliss. We honor uh, 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 who else? There's so many people. And if I forget them, y'all need to write them down because y'all know I can't remember everybody. <laughs> Kima Flood. Uh, who else? Marjorie Gorham Jones. Who else is in the building? Everybody in the building. Y'all need to come. Well, no more tickets. Where's so there's nine to? women. I'm mad. Uh, Where's Anne it? Gorham. Thank God for my god sister, Alicia. Uh, my daughter, Sky's Events, who's helping us out. Exit Realty, who came through and helped us out. Uh, the LA uh, uh, Vegas Hall of Famer, Boxing Hall of Famer, Bernard Badass Brown, helped us out. He'll be in the building. Everybody's going to be in that building. So I am super duper excited and kudos to each and every one. Janice Deloach is going to be there. She's from in Mahissa Green. Janice is from the Women's Songwriters Hall of Fame. She's being on it. It's just too many, too many, too much. And I'm excited. In DC? It's in Capitol Heights, in the DMV, baby. Yes. 
So how did you connect with all these big superstars? Oh, Patrice Fisher from Saints and Sinners. And uh, she played Trey Cheney's girlfriend, Saints and Sinners. And Tyler Perry's Ruthless. She's our keynote speaker. Asia. Oh, I'm forgetting everybody. Asia from Radio One. She's going to be our MC and DJ Flavor from uh, 92.3, uh, 92.3 and WKYS, 93.9. He's our DJ. That's it. I think that's everybody. I don't know how I connected with these people. I think I build relationships. Um, Flavor is like my nephew. DJ Flavor is my nephew. So I'll call him and say, hey, Flav, I'm trying to do this. What you want to do? He'll say, what you need, auntie? This is what I need. Bam. So I call Bernard Badass. I say, uh, no. Nah, this is what I need. Okay, I got you. So and so and so and so. Jonica, everybody, I just build relationships. And when you mm -hmm. build relationships, that's how people show up. Well, when is the next event? Because I want to show up. <laughs> next <laughs> event. Next event, we're thinking about doing something for October um, for domestic violence awareness. And uh, we're going to have a panel of women working on that and men because domestic violence affects everyone. And um, a lot of people say, well, you know, the women, the women, the women. But I've seen men. I My godson lives in my home today and was busted in the head by a woman. So I've seen men have to go through that same situation. So we're going to be doing a, it's a lot coming up. I, again, my brain runs faster than my body. So we'll, I'll let everybody know, though. So I, I want to talk about the domestic violence piece. Um, I was saying to someone, because I experienced domestic violence, saw domestic violence. And one of the things that really, as I'm, you know, as you reflect back on your life and, and where you are, I remember I said to somebody that I thought that domestic violence, that's what they call it, but I thought fighting was a part of a relationship because I saw it so much. I saw it with my mom. I saw it with my aunties. So when, in my first relationship, I remember being upset because the dude didn't hit me. So I re reached over and smacked him upside the head. And then he smacked me upside the head back. You know, I was like, okay, well, girl, that make up and break up and love making stuff. Uh -huh, that what? But tell, let's talk to me about, because I think it's so important for people to understand you've gone through, God has carried you through many different things, right? So where you are, like you say, it don't necessarily mean that's where you're going to be. That's your transition. But how did that lend to sort of your talent even your storylines. Um, so I grew up watching it firsthand and God rest my mother's soul because even the person that was dealing with her in that situation, they died really good friends. My, In fact, he was my mom's first husband, my sister's dad, my brother's dad. He passed away December 28th and my mother passed away January 15th. And um, my mother had forgiven him, had done so many things, but I was scarred. Um, and he never put his hands on me. He was—he never beat me or anything. It's just that when I was little, I could hear him beating my mother and I would rock like this and suck my thumb and hold my head and get lost in a book. And um, he used to call me scared straight because I was, I'm shy by nature. People that know me, they know I'm shy by nature. Like once I'm away from all of this, I'm just in my bedroom or at my laptop. Um, so I didn't know how to express myself. And so growing up, I didn't know what a healthy or unhealthy relationship was. I learned to function and dysfunction. Um, if you cheated on me, it was okay. I'll take you back. Um, and people would say, I wish I, I wish you was my girl. And I'm thinking, oh, because I'm ride or die. No, because you're stupid. Okay. Because if I could do those things and still get away with it. Now, let me just tell you something. Matters of the heart is very, very difficult. You don't know what you're going to do or what you're going to say if you're in it. So I, I, I advise a lot of people to not give your um, opinion. Um, if you haven't walked in that person's shoes, uh, I thought I was going to be married 44 and a half years like my grandparents were. I thought I was going to be, you know, to death do us part. Um, I'm still today healing from a lot of things. Um, I'm still today processing a lot of things because I stayed in certain relationships um, and knowing, and, and God gives us intuition. And when your intuition is telling you something, you still want to be, act as if it's not there. You still want to say, oh, no, it's not like that. He, he ain't do that. Mm -mm. You're just jealous. Mm -mm. He loved me. <laughs> yeah. And truthfully speaking, it, it's not. So I had to 
I'm still in the learning process of unlearning and relearning because me, I'm an abstinent woman. And a lot of men find out when you're abstinent, are oh, you going to be abstinent till you hook up with me? Okay. Um, so uh, I'm still learning some things and I, I started like trying to date and all this stuff. And I got introduced to ghosting because that was the first, I never knew it about ghosting. I guess I've been with the same person for a long time. So I'm a little slow and a little out the game. I'm a communicator. So I learned today to talk. I used drugs because I was hiding my feelings. I, I was getting high because I did not know how to handle my emotions. And when I was told that talking can save me, I'm a communicator. So when people don't talk, I'm, the first thing I started doing was figuring, what did I do? And then my niece, London Knight, who's going to be in the building, a uh, 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 songwriter, would say, Auntie, Silence is a form of communication. And I'm like, well, mature people talk. <laughs> so I had, you know, but again, I had to get off the dating sites. I had to become my own best friend again. I had to say yes to Andre because I realized that times have changed. There's a lot of things out here that's different that I'm not accustomed to. People text all day long. Well, I'd rather just pick up the phone and say, hey, boo, hey, girl, hey, bruh. I text if there's an emergency. People write books and paragraphs of text messages. And that's- Ain't that something? Ain't that something? I don't know how to do that. <laughs> now, listen, I will tell you this. If I don't know what's going on and you won't answer me, then I start texting, okay? And you still don't answer. <laughs> it's a different world, sis. It I'm is. I, I'm just finding and it out. Hello, everyone out there. Miss Andre is single, but it is so a different world. The dating thing is just like, wow, really? Is that how we doing it? That's how they do it. And then I see, I, I think you and I were talking about this the other day. Like if I'm on a dating site and I meet somebody, then I'll come off so that we can kind of sort of, I, I'll, I don't know how you can just talk to thousands of people and, and be all over the place. Because is your name Roger? Oh, what's your name? Raymond? Oh, wait. I, I, so I'm a little slow and I tell people I'm a mermaid. I just swim up, you know, but um, so I'm just learning how things go. And my thank God I got a 40 year old daughter and a 36 year old son and my 22 year old be like, mom, I ghost people too. And, and, and I don't owe them no explanation. I was like, oh my God, y'all so cruel. But <laughs> listen, my 41 year old daughter said she, schooled me about ghosting i've been ghosted too but she's like mom you're talking to them and you sound things seem like they're going okay and then all of a sudden they stop talking to you like it's a thing i said well, well why because i'm like you i want to know why what happened <laughs> we were doing fine and then what no on to the next i but that's what happens when you're on those things i saw so i said well you know what i'll just chill out and make it do what it do and i'll take myself on dates and i get real cute and then i'll go sit in a restaurant by myself and enjoy me um and i had years to do that um but i'm a person who loves love i love you know to be around a significant other but i need to wait and continue to get myself ready body mind and soul i walk every day and that's what i tell people my king looking for me he's looking for me and so i gotta be ready when he get here i know that's right <laughs> i know that's right let's see some of our comments so oh lacy lace wanted to know where the event was posted terry hatchet that's my sister she said hello queen hey terry hey true or oh, you don't see it as abuse that's true and yes, I don't like tax the texting thing. No, because first of all, I'm my kids tell me all the time I try to write full sentences in text because I don't know the lingo. And by the time I'm finished, I'm tired and forgot what I was getting ready to say. So it, it and we're work. writers. So we're writers. So if I'm trying to do something, I'm you know, we're we're writers, we're artists, that's what we do. But yes, and yes. I I was telling somebody today, they was like, Oh, tell me all about yourself. I'm intrigued. I said, Oh, I don't text. I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna do all, all of this and then you see them kids their hands be let, let me tell you something they could they could text the the, the what they use dictionaries people don't know nothing about that but they could text the dictionaries in five minutes in yes minutes so um okay so we so you are single free waiting for the king yes. what are you working on so now I have three movies on the burner 
I have a movie called The Apostle that we will be casting for. I have a movie called uh, Deceived in Plain Sight, which is loosely based on truth. And I play this psychotic sister. Um, I have that and I have a mother for Christmas that will be directed by Antoine Allen, who did Lola. That's what he, Antoine Allen is like a mentor to me. He's young enough to be my son, but old enough in the industry that I take direction from him. So um, and he keeps me working. And you guys go to Tubi and watch Lola because I I'm in that movie. And um, if you like that, then Lola 2 is coming out soon. And um, so those are the three, three movies that I'm working on. And I was just uh, given a call about a short film that I'm going to create, uh, make into a feature with Mike is Michael uh, Chen. So we're going to work on this movie called Forgiven together. Uh, the short is already finished, right, been written, but we want to uh, make it into a feature film. So and, and oh, I'm acting also in another movie called The Good Fight of Faith, where I play uh, Charlene, the mother of a young lady. So how do you have three projects going at the same time? <laughs> how does that happen? What do you do? <laughs> um, let's see. So a mother for Christmas, we're just get ready to finish Act Three. A um, uh, uh, Ayana Blaine. Anna Blaine is working with me in writing that one. So we got acts one and two together. We're going to finish act three. The Apostle is being written by myself, um, Theron Dumas, um, which is also an actor friend of mine. Uh, I decided to ask him to come and help me write. And I'm going to reach out to Eugene Walker. So Eugene, if you're watching, I'm ready to call you tonight to finish uh, The Apostle. And uh, Michael Chen is working with me on the other film. So I now employ help to um, other creative minds to come in and give me a hand so I'm not overwhelmed. And of course, I don't mind doing a lot of the work. Uh, it just seems like when you have different eyes and different people, you can actually begin to see things in another way. Just like um, with the movie, The Apostle, my actual pastor is playing in that movie. And, um, and I was like, well, dad, it's got cursing and this, that, and the other. He said, I ain't never seen nobody go to hell for saying a curse word. I want to address that because you made a statement about when you first started writing, you were like, oh, no, they don't like that in the church. Tell me about that. So you coming from being a pastor and then you start writing films that you feel, oh, that's not appropriate. Tell me about that. I put myself in a box. That's what I did. I put Andre in a box. First of all, if I thank God for the gift of imagination and every good and perfect gift come from the father of lights, why am I worried about what someone else has to say? My whole thing is, God, how do you see me? Because I'm that chick just like Rahab. Rahab, they probably would have never let Rahab the prostitute in the building, baby. Hello. Okay. <laughs> all right. But Rahab, that's my chick. Okay. So if I, Antoine told me a long time ago, don't wait, create. So if every time I turn around, I'm waiting for somebody to give me that perfect role or to write that perfect story and waiting and get down, you know, downplayed and all of that. So I started creating them myself and I stopped, I took God out of the box. Okay. Because that the God I served was the same one that brought me off that, off that glass pipe. The God I served was the same one that took them cigarettes out my mouth. The God I served when I was down and out and my husband said he didn't want to be married anymore was the same one that picked me up from the muck and mire and clay and had me ministering to any and everybody. I can preach like never before. Don't get it twisted. But at the end of the day, it ain't about that. I still walk in my calling. I still know the word of God. I still know how to minister to God's people. I actually work for a funeral home. I'm the funeral home's preacher. OK, so and I have an empowerment line every morning for the last 14 years called Wake Up in the Spirit with Pastor Andre and friends. So I am still who God says I am. However, I am an entertainer. And as long as I'm not I don't have a problem with uh, uh, compassion. I won't compromise. I'm not selling my soul. I'm not doing none of those things. But guess what? I'm going to use the gift that God gave me and man didn't give it to me. So man can't take it from me. Hallelujah. Don't give me the shouting. <laughs> Hallelujah. You better say it, sis. You better say it because I'm telling you, people get so caught up on yeah. what religious folks say to them. Oh, yes. that ain't right. Like they God and you can't do this and you can't do that. Well, listen, if God can, like you say, if he can call Rahab, if he can call, if he can make the donkey praise him, I don't think 
religious people really read the Bible? Because if they did, they would say it's some folks with some stuff, some issues all through it. All Please. through it. I tell people all the time, God didn't call the qualified. He qualified the call. Come on. Okay? So at the end of the day, they didn't call me. God did. And and then I have a man of God who keeps me in prayer, who watches over me, who prays for me, who fasts for me. My pastor always does. And if the, if you look at a lot of these people who are um actors, there are some of them I know personally who are pastors and still moving in the entertainment arts and entertainment because we write where people can relate. We write to what people can relate to. We don't write because oh this is a great story and. Oh, Shanda da Baba. No, we write things that people can relate to. So in Africa, they do have uh, uh, marriages. The movie I did backwards, they do have young girls that go back and they don't make it out. We write what people can relate to. And it's ministry. Like yes. you said, you got to reach folks that feel like I'm not good enough for God. Mm -hmm. You got to reach folks who have church hurt. You got to yeah. reach who feel like I'm stuck right here. I can't move to say exactly what you're saying tonight yes. you say to the other side. I'm a living example. We are saved by the, our testimony. You know, that's, like right. you said, it's, that's what it's all about. And we got to really start operating that more. Yes. And lead love, lead in love. Yes, yes. I, I don't, I want to touch on, um, you were married for a long time. I was. And... And then it, it broke up. Tell me about that and how that. Impacted. I believe, um, uh, let's see, how could I put it? I believe that he was gone before he physically left, if I could say that. Um, we Well, let, let me just say this. I met my ex-husband when I was 19 and he was 18. Okay. Um, my daughter, who's now 40 this year, was only six months old. Uh, we do have a 36-year-old son. And... Um, we were both at the time getting high, uh, and, you know, doing what young people do. So we got married in 1990. We got divorced in 2000. We got remarried in 2004 and got divorced in 2021, but we were separated since 2017. Now, let me just say this to you guys. It was not an easy transition for me because I, we were happy, pretty much getting along. And then one day it was like, I rather I don't want to be married no more. I was like, what? I don't want no actress. I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want that. I, don't want that. I was like, okay, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. And at the time when he physically left, um, there are some people that can attest to that. I was very sick. I had like 400 um staples and 300 stitches in my body. I had just had a hernia. So I don't have an umbilical cord. I don't have a navel because the hernia kept coming back. And so they had to take it. And so I had stitches all the way up. And I felt inadequate i gotta be honest i felt very inadequate i felt like what's wrong with me and this that the other nobody's gonna want me because i have all these kids and and I, so i make it known that i ain't look for no baby father because one thing about my ex-husband he's a great father to his to these children so we don't have that issue um but i had an issue because i didn't know what i was going to do i didn't know where i was going to go um and so i did have uh, a 30-day relationship <laughs> It was funny because I was a, I was still a pastor, and that's when I got introduced to the dating sites. So I had um, this thirty day relationship um, with a person who really wasn't interested in women. And um, <laughs> oh, we, we, we girl, we got to talk. <laughs> so that was funny, but nevertheless, um, I ended up uh, and and so I started hanging out with friends of mine from my past in case I wanted to go out and go places. They were familiar with me. We didn't have to, you know, had, didn't have to be sexual, all that stuff. I just didn't want to be alone, you know, in different places. So I would call up some of my male friends. Um, but after all of that, God told me just, mm -mm, just chill. And I chilled. And let me tell you something, those lonely nights, ah, Sis. those teary Listen. days, those Valentine's days, those Christmases and birthdays, and you know, people calling you out the out the clear blue because they think it's a, you know, I'm gonna keep it at transparent, you know, booty calls and Hello. all that kind of stuff. Hello. And and I'm like, uh uh, uh I don't do that. Yo, what, what, what? No, mm -mm, I gotta hold tight. And um, and and so that's what I've been doing. And it's been it's gotten easier as the time gone by. 
but sometimes I have to be honest, it was lonely. It does get lonely. And that's why I believe God has given me all of my children. And that's why I believe that God has given me the gift of imagination so I could stay busy. Now, I did have a bad day the other day. was like, you know what, mommy, I want to be with you. And my family was like, oh, no, we, we don't like the way that sounds. And um, but I really had a longing to just wanting to be with my mother. And, um, and and part of it was because I thought I had met somebody that was the one and yeah. it wasn't the one. And God mm -hmm. was like, girl, you, you got on your mirror. Don't get distracted by distractions. What are you doing? I love you. I love you. I think we laid it somewhere. I think I so too. Back and forth with the husband thing and girl, it is lonely being single. Cause it's, and it's, it is, it's interesting because as women, as we are, we appear so powerful, so strong. We have so much going on. And people don't know, I need to be cuddled too. You know, you want to be cuddled too. Yes. And then, oh, this is it. That ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I did throughout all of that? And don't get me wrong. It, there are days when I, because I'm going to tell you something. I kept trying to reach out to the brother because I was like, what, 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 what? <laughs> Okay, what you know, and then look, and then thinking it was coming from my mother, you know what I'm saying, Mommy, you did this. Yeah, you. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> look, I, you know, I'm I'm you know forever 25. Because if I go through my house and they'll ask them how old am I, am I they're gonna say 25. So I'm forever 25, right? So you know, I was feeling some kind of way, sometimes sexy and all that stuff, but uh, <laughs> but it, it does get lonely, but I'm not alone. And see, you got to remember that desire is not desperation. Mm. So just because you desire somebody, you're not desperate for that. And when you become, when that thing becomes overwhelming to you, where all you could think of is that thing and this, that, and the other, I had to go in prayer, say, okay, God, I got to cut this cord, whatever that emotional thing was, it's got to go because girlfriend can't do that. And, and now, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm open to dinner. People call me, you want to go out to dinner? I'm like, just meet me there or something like that. But I learned to love up on me. I learned to have a relationship with me. I learned how to say, look, you are beautiful. You are more than enough. You are who God says you are. You are God's leading lady, the apple of God's oh. eye, the queen waiting on the king. And if the king does not come, position yourself, queen. Don't, and when your crown get crooked, put it back up and walk with your head up high. That's who we are. What? You said something there. Miss Queen and this Black Woman's History Month. I'm going to say it's Black Woman's History Month. Because you. you say so, that we have to repeat that to ourselves. Yes. And that's the affirmation that, like you said, I told you, my mom's been gone for, my daughter's 36, 35 mm -hmm. years. Some days it's like yesterday. And, and it's not that so much when you said, I want to be with my mom. It's just that I want my mommy. Yes. You know? And yes. people don't understand that till they go through that. Yeah. I pulled over today when I dropped my children off, my girls and my son. Every time I drop them off for school, I say, remember, you're a prince. You're a prince. And I tell my daughters, remember, you're beautiful and you're smart. And when I dropped them off and said, you're beautiful and you're smart, have a great day. I drove down the street and pulled over and I called my girlfriend, Monique, and I just started screaming in the phone. I miss my mother. I miss my mother. I'm having this event for these women and I want my mother to be sitting there. But the beautiful thing about it is my 40 year old daughter is an event planner. She'll be there. My 21 year old daughter should be 22. She'll be there along with her sisters. And then my sister, uh, who lost both my mother and her father, she'll be there. And so there are enough people that are going to be there of some support. But it's just that I had that moment this morning. And that's why even when you're positioning yourself, you got to position yourself. So even when someone comes into your life, he can, he can, you know, I, I've got certain expectations that I'm trying to meet now and I'm just not going to dummy me down just to say, cause I don't, I don't want to take anybody just to say, I got somebody. He want to kiss my tears. Come on, somebody. All Come right. On. When, I pull, when I pull over, <laughs> he going to say my queen on the side of the road. Listen, I got to take off for a minute cause she needs me. That's what I'm talking about. So I got, I'm positioning myself. Now I know what it is that my heart's desire and I don't have to just excel for it. So I pulled over. I cried. I let it all out. Mommy, I need you, mommy. I want you, please. I want my mother. And that's how I felt. And I went through that all day today. I was on WOL. The, the host had to call me and say, Andre, I felt it. I couldn't even articulate my words. 
that's how my yeah. heart was today. It's just pain. There are no it's, words. Yeah, she. My, I just lost my mother January fifteenth, and even it, it. It's just. It was just something. But I'm here, and I'm grateful, and I and I thank God for the all of that I'm going through. Because my thing is this, and you ain't there for me when I need you, baby. When God brings me forth, I I'm good. I tell people all the time, you weren't there when we was crawling, baby. We not a walk now. Hmm. You better say so, sis. You better say so. Tell people where they can get in touch with you. We can't. All leave. platforms. All platforms. I, the letter I, am Andre Harris. And it's Andre with two E's. All across the board. I, can't I am you. Andre Harris. But let me see. We got to have to put that in the um, comment section. You got your computer up. We got to. We gotta let oh, people I do. I too. have it here. Oh, hi, Stevie. Uh, let me see. I am Andre Harris all around the board. Do you see all it? All around the board, y'all. Everywhere. Facebook, Snapchat, IG, Instagram. Snapchat. Oh, girl, Everywhere. You, I you, am you Andre ahead Harris. of me. You got the Snapchat going. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my kids, my kids was like, you need to get um TikTok. I was like, okay, so I'll be doing TikTok now. And now that I'm getting followers, they have a, oh, you think you, you doing too much, mommy. And so <laughs> I make them do old school TikTok. So like they be having all of them, hey, mom, no hands. I can't catch up with that stuff. So I be doing <laughs> Gladys Knight, you know. Listen, <laughs> listen, I had my, my grandchildren made up a whole dance to, um, I would change my life, my life. Fine, 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 that's fine, my theme fine. song. Oh, girl, that's my song. That's what it says, because I like what I see when I'm looking at me. When hey, I'm looking by the mirror. I <laughs> got my head on straight. I got my mind right. I ain't going to let you kill it. So, you know, that's that's where I am. And I have to minister to myself for real every day. In the morning, I have something on my wall, a big poster that says, hello, gorgeous. And another one says, you're already gorgeous. Don't be distracted by distraction. Did you pray? If you didn't pray, stop right now and do it. And so that's what I do for myself because sometimes when you're waiting for somebody else to do it, the moment you begin to love on you and take care of you, everything else will fall into place. But first of all, you have to take care of you. Oh my God, I couldn't have said it better. I I I love you. Like you, you're my new best friend. I want to do some work with you. We would, and you got me on point. I have to send my sisters on here now. Andre got me like, listen, you need to do X, Y, and Z. I was like, yes, ma'am. I did my homework. <laughs> I did my homework. before the show started. I said, did you do your homework? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you have this magnetic spirit. Thank you. Your spirit, you know what it is? It's the glory. Hallelujah. Thank it you. is the glory that just rests upon you. Thank you. And you see, I just got chills. Like, I oh. feel that. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. So I, I'm just so grateful that you took the opportunity and time to, to kind of hang out with us tonight and share your story. It is a Thanks. wonderful story, y'all. I am Andre Harris. Y'all need to know that. <laughs> Look for her on all platforms. She is doing big things. Will continue to do big things. Don't miss it. If you blink, you might miss it. So listen, <laughs> listen. And 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 Dr. Rashonda Conti said, "Yes, she does." That's my love bug. Hey, Dr. Conti. <laughs> and you have a page and a website. What's your website? I am AndreHarris.com. Everything, cause that's what everything. My Facebook fan page is I am Andre Harris too. Instagram I am Andre Harris. YouTube I am Andre Harris. I'm trying to learn how to get it together, cause I do a lot of lip syncing. So I do a lot of so. I love lip syncing, although I can't sing. So just follow me, and I'm trying to. Uh, my brand manager is along, along with AIM uh, Media is trying to work on positioning me where I need to be as far as the YouTube goes, cause I'm inconsistent. But if you follow me, I'll know you're there. All right. All right. Thank you. My daughter lives in Maryland, so we're going to have to plan a day where we can meet, hang out, share some laughs and all of that. Yeah. And I'm going to need you to go to Fredericksburg because I rented a car and I left my shoes in the car and they called me back and said, girl, your shoes is here. That's why I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's in Hearst and Fredericksburg. 
somewhere down there. My, I got these bad olive green <laughs> red shoes that I left there. And then you got to go get them for me. All right. Tell me where it is. I mean, we're going to figure it out. We're going to work okay. it out. We're going to work it out. I love you, love you, love you. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Again, we are sponsored by Armstrong International Media for the culture and for the collective. You can see Sister Talk replay every Friday at 7 7.30 on Untapped Music Radio and a replay yes. at 6 a.m. on Saturdays on Untapped Music Radio where we rock. We rock on Untapped Music Radio, y'all. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We love you. We love you. We love you. God bless you. Thank and remember, you, you just heard it. You just heard it in honor of National Women's History Month. You can do all things. Don't she let can. nothing stop you. Because when God is on your side, you can do all things. Enjoy that transition. This is your girl, your chocolate smoothie, Miss Sister Talk with Valerie, saying good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.